Hey everyone, this is Fretboard Roadmap, Caged Edition Week 6. And we are creating with the A and the G shapes. We've spent a good amount of time going over these shapes. We're going to review them uh, before we dive into creating with them and, uh, and doing our song. And really, this course has been about uh, learning the caged shapes, but it's been about arranging too and applying the caged shapes um, in various musical contexts. This is really the best way to think about the cage system, I think. You don't necessarily want to think of it as purely improvisational or purely just a way to, to get around the fretboard, but a way for you to uh, get ideas, a way for you to uh, truly be creative. So before we get into it uh, too much on the on the creative side, Let's review the A and the G shapes. So I'm going to pull those up. We'll start with the A shapes. Three. Here, let's do this so you can see me a bit better. Three. Five, seven, three, five, seven, four, five, seven, five, six, eight, five, seven, eight. That's the scale. Again, scale. corresponding chord. And now the arpeggio. It's measure 11 on the tab. to the chord. You can see how they outline each other. And the pentatonic. This is measure 15. So if we play everything back to back, it gives us a, a great idea of the way everything fits together. Scale. Chord. Arpeggio. Tonic. Back to the chord. See how they all outline. Now, we will go to the G shapes. So we're simply going from this area to this area. And again, it's not that important that we have that we're able to play, especially this chord, completely and, and, and make use of it, but using parts of it. That's the fun part about it. All those are, are derivatives or, or built off of this chord. So let's look at the G shapes. Eight, it's all in the key of C, right? Eight, five, seven, eight, 
five seven nine five seven five six eight five seven eight. Scale again. And like I mentioned last week, and like some of you pointed out, there's variations on these things all over the place. And it's totally fine if you want to play something a little different. Um, you know, if you're doing... Right there instead of here. Either way is totally fine. But here's the scale pattern that we have tabbed out at least. Pinky. Chord. Measure 10. And arpeggio. Measure 11. And the pentatonic, which is my favorite part of this particular scale, this particular uh, pattern. We know that. A lot of people know that. But did you know that it was part of the G uh, shape in the cage system? Okay, all of the G shapes again. Here we go. Scale. Chord. Measure 11, arpeggio. Arpeggio again. Oops. Pentatonic, measure 15. Chord again. All right, so what we've done is we've established that we are going to be playing uh, in these two areas. And if we connected them via just the pentatonic scale, it would look like this, which is, which is kind of fun. <laughs> That's neat to be able to do, to reference the two pentatonic scales. You can do that, of course, with the scales as well. Uh, so we, we start on this one. And of course the chords and the chords. The arpeggios and the arpeggios. Connecting 
bringing both of those together and just having those in your mind that they're they're accessible and then picking out the common areas like this I call this the trunk that triad there is part of both chords so there's all sorts of neat things you can do around it just by sort of recognizing that those two go together. So, uh, I'll check in some questions here. Looks like we're good. And let's listen to our example. Before we do that, though, I'm going to do uh, prep it for this week. Case track week six. So we don't have to worry about the other tracks. And here. Eight track stack. This will be. Okay, so now let's listen to what we've got. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is figure out what key we're playing in. And it goes to a minor there. But let's go ahead and take the beginning here. We're in D. Okay, so that first part, we have D to G. I think that's all that goes on there. Let's listen again. So if we're playing those using our shapes, And then here, we have a B, B minor. G, A, E. Okay, so that second section is D minor, or I'm sorry, uh, B minor, G, A, E minor,
when it goes back up to A. Okay, so let's just loosely play along to both sections um, and see if we have if we if we have the chords right, if we're on the right path, and then we'll start uh, start creating. Here we go from the top. I don't care about the chords I'm playing necessarily. Or I play care about the chords, not the positions. Turn up that bass a little bit. take that B section again, definitely. Okay, I got it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is come up with some bedrock rhythm or just kind of define the genre, define what I'm wanting to do, but realizing that I've got my uh, A and my G shapes. So we're playing in the key of D. What does that look like? Well, here's D for my G shapes. Here's D for my A shapes. So right away... I want to get familiar with where I'm playing in the neck. So we're absolutely going to be using this trunk. Let's take the A section and see if we can't come up with something that we like. shape. We could do something like this. That might be kind of neat. That's different than what we did last week. Uh, triple check my tuning here real quick. Okay, so we're going to try using, using the A shapes as a, a rhythm bed here.
Well, let's see, it goes. Goes up to A there. Let's try this again. doesn't sound like it goes to that E or that uh that five chord or does it let's see here it does it does briefly <coughs> then I do it right I did okay let's listen back to this I like the little scratches in there too. I think that's a great starting point. We can build around that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try doing something for the B section too to try to tie them together. It looks like we've got a question here. Then you can take the C, A, and G shapes in order and move them around the neck. Absolutely, that's where this becomes so powerful. We're focusing on the A and the G shapes today, but but yeah, I mean, that's what makes this so cool. Um, you can move them around the neck. You have access to, um, to so much, right? And we chose to, to just use the A there, but that's, that's part of the coolness, right? You can choose to use all sorts of different things. Um, because you know where the tools are. You know what's going on. So, all right. Let's listen to the B section again. Let's see if what we're doing here Okay, so if we're going to be doing that, if we're going to be sticking with our theme of the A shape, let's just see what happens. That would be all the way up here. Uh, or... B minor, I don't know, it might be, no, I think I like going high, it's like chili peppers-ish. Let's try it. Let's try it. I'm going to create a separate track here. We'll record on this one. We're forgetting about the E minor.
That's what we want. back up to the A the last time. Okay, let's try it again. We're getting it. Listening back to that. Let's get that, let's get that little piece. that piece. Okay, good. Now, let's see how they flow together. I've only used A shapes, it's kind of cool. Okay, well the first thing I'm feeling is that the, the B section needs some beef behind it. So, I want a, a bigger sound here. And we're going to crank the gain a little. Use a standard bar chord. Remember the first week we we did some things that were were layered in there, playing with standard bar chords, and I think it needs to be drier than that too. Uh, we'll go over here, and we don't need all that reverb on there. There. So I'm gonna play along, just with some bar chords, and see if it gives it the beef. This is actually gonna bring out the sound of that 
that high A shape riff a little bit more, I think. So we're talking about the B section here. straight it might sound kind of cool. Let's put it in context a little bit more and try playing along. This will definitely need to be doubled. I really like what that does um, to the rhythm. We've got this syncopated thing that where the the um, the A shaped riffs are going right around where the you know, and then you get this really straight uh, guitar behind it, this straight bar chord sort of power chord thing. Let's double that and see what it see if it completes the sound even more. Listening. Okay. I think that progression in dynamics where we're going from, you know, here to here and, and the, the A shapes go up in, in pitch, having those lower power chord things really, really helps. Okay, well what else can we do here in the A section I think there's a pentatonic riff calling that would be kind of neat utilizing one of these two shapes We could even uh, utilize both shapes, starting here and sliding up into this shape. Right, so instead of playing the root here, we're playing the root here. Combining shapes, right? 
Let's riff on that a little bit. I got some questions here. Hold on. Hi, Vincent. Beginner question. I know I've been doing this for weeks, but can you tell us more how to find uh, what key a song is? It seems like the first step, first start to uh, composing a solo. You know, Vincent, were you here last week for... Um, gosh... I think it was the modal. It was it was the modal course last week. Um, we we talked a ton about that. Um, I'm not sure. So if you, if you go back and watch the archive, um, we spent a lot of time on the key transposition table last week, um, and that would be a great one to go back and watch um, because it, it uh, we talk about the key signatures. We talk about we talked about uh, major scale harmony, talked about identifying the key, talked about identifying the mode. Um, that's absolutely check out that week. That's a key week if you missed it. Um, and then any pointers on finding the right shape for a solo after discovering the key of the song? You showed earlier two D chords if the song is in D. Which position should I... You know, it, it doesn't really matter what position you choose. Um, it's all about options, right? We know that the song's in the key of D... And so we know that we're going to, and we also know that this week, just because we said so, we're going to utilize the G shapes and the A shapes. But I'm choosing that because I structured the course that way. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean that, that anybody has to choose it. There's no wrong choice. It's about phrasing. It's about what you want to do with the music. And we've, we've put these limitations on ourselves so we can get familiar with the various shapes. That's the main thing that we're, that we're focusing on. But there is no what position you should choose. It's what could you do. And that's, that's part of what we're doing here today is we're deciding to choose these positions. And we're seeing what kind of music we can get out of them. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's helpful. Um, here we go. So I'm going to riff on this pentatonic idea after I duplicate my track. I like the idea of it being a little bit more distorted. We're going to center this one up. That feels like it's in the vibe. Using We're combining those two pentatonic shapes. That's really neat sounding because over the chord change, if we keep the same same structure going, um, it creates this nice harmonic difference. I'm going to listen to that. The other thing that's kind of neat is that we've got this note which is the same as the other notes that are happening right there. Which I actually kind of like because it creates this, um, this feeling that the riff is sort of coming out of nowhere. You know, and then the chord progression is going back and forth from D to G. Let's try it again. I need to be a little bit more in the pocket. Ah, let's try it one more time. I like the little slide in.
Yeah, listening back. I love it. I love the way that those layers work. Okay, so now I'm going to trim this up just a little bit here. I like how that's placed. Man, that needs to get out of there before the other ones start. All right, I'm here in another cool part. I think it's a cool part anyway. I'm going to duplicate my track again. And we're going to pan it over this way. That's what I'm hearing in my head. Okay, now using these shapes as a vehicle. Where can I find it? So I'm using the G shape. And going back to the A shape right here. See that? See how I did that? So what position should you choose? Doesn't matter, but I'm using these. And it, it seemed to work. Do you want to try? I like that pickup pattern better, I think. See what it sounds like. Okay, I like the line, but it's kind of in the same place as all the other stuff I've been doing. Maybe we could play higher. Take the take the top part here. Uh, let's see, we're we're playing. So there's, there's my sus chord based off of this shape, right? But I'm going to play, I'm going to play the top, we're just going to do this. Yeah, we'll do that. The shapes are just inspiring these things, right? Let's try this. Ooh. So we got a G there. Do that, or can we? Is there a way to play the G with the A shape? Mm -hmm. 
Or would we want to play it just down here? Because that's part of the G shape. Yeah, let's do that. So we have... Let's see how that works. Yeah. Listening. I like how it creates this hole too. It creates this back and forth between these two parts, right? You have the da 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 You have those things happening but at different times. That's kind of Jimmy Buffettish almost. Okay, I think that's a nice transition there. Okay, looks like we've got a question here. How come in the supplemental content when you show the G scale you don't have an F sharp? Or the A scale though, there's no F sharp or G sharp or C sharp. Um, there should be. Let's go over here and look. We have, oh, oh, no, um, because these are just shapes. They're not, um, if you've been following from the beginning of the course, maybe, maybe you haven't, uh, but check out the archives. These are just shapes. We're presenting the shapes in the key of C. So this is the G shapes in the key of C. This is the A shapes in the key of C. We're playing, and, and just as a, as a quick review, so we're playing, we're, we're, we're utilizing this sort of thing. C that looks like a C, a C that looks like an A, A shape, a C that looks like a G, G shape, but they're all C. So when I present the supplemental content tab, all of it's presented in the key of C to keep things consistent. This allows us to map the neck, fretboard roadmap, right? So we've got, we got our, our C shape, C chord scale, arpeggio, pentatonic, and then we've got our A chord scale, arpeggio, G, that is a C, they're all C's, they're just different shapes, chord, scale, arpeggio, pentatonic. So that's why we're not in the key of A or the key of G, we're, we're in the supplemental content case, just trying to keep it consistent from week to week, we're in the key of C with different shapes. I hope that clears things up a little bit. Okay, um, so let's, let's, let's go back here and listen. Um, do we need anything else? Are we ready to try our hand at some lead playing? What about a riff that continues over, you know, kind of the same vibe as this? Continues over. I, I think I like that idea. Let's duplicate this track. Move it down here. 
Maybe we'll center it up a little bit. And... Something like that. But that's kind of in the same vein as the chorus. See? Let's see what happens. Oops. I want to be on this track. No, that doesn't work. It's, it walks over it. So we need to be higher. We don't necessarily want to use that shape right now. There's our shape. Maybe there's something there. Oh, I gotta fix this too here. Let's record it over it. Let's do that. That might be kind of neat. No, nah, it's too leadish. I want more riffish. That might work if I get the right tone. Let's do it here. I like that. I bet if we if we made that all gainy, that would sound pretty neat. Let's do this. And we'll get rid of this and maybe we'll do like this guy. Lots of It's a noisy, it's okay. We'll get that noise out. Yeah, it's just, it's such a perfect little riff opportunity, right? All we're doing is we're, oh, that's a lot of noise. Uh, all we're doing is we're taking a little bit of this pentatonic scale. And following the progression changes. go in and get rid of that horrible buzz. What's kind of neat is if you cut off the tails, make sure you start right here, the, the compression that is introduced by the gain, you don't notice the noise so much. You have the line. But that said, that might be a bit, mu a bit much on the gain. I like the I like the trashiness sound of it. I 
And then we'll get rid of it there. So we just have... Yeah, okay, let's listen. Okay, from the top, listening. Yeah, those two pentatonic riffs tie into each other nicely. And, you know, some of the other ones, we've done, you know, guitar solos over them. Um, I'm not sure this needs it. I think that the, this is so riffy and bouncy, you wouldn't really hear in this sort of genre um, that, you know, those riffs almost, almost play that role. I hope, guys, you've seen the power of these shapes, how even just a piece of them brings inspiration into a musical context. Like, that's the whole point. That's the whole reason we're doing what we're doing. Inspiration, based on these tools, when you're presented with a musical context or something you need to play over, it, it sort of lets you know what you can choose from. It, it gives you ideas because you see these shapes in front of you. The cage system, and really any pattern on the guitar, is more than just a pattern, it's a tool. There is no right or wrong answer. There's no, um, you should do this, or you shouldn't do this. We have intentionally put constraints on ourselves so that we are getting familiar with these particular shapes. That's the whole point, but we don't have to put these constraints on ourselves um, for any other reason. So this week, we focused on the A and the G shapes, C, A, G. Next week, we're going to be working on the E shapes. So we've got two more sets of shapes to work with. Um, I think we're still having time zone issues. So if you missed this one, hopefully you're catching it on the archive. And if you have questions, you can always send me a private message after watching the archive as well. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for participating. Thanks for your questions. We'll continue with the E-shapes next week.